hear these words that call us into worship from the book we love so well, Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Sometimes it's hard to give you a more excellent praise because we find ourselves downtrodden. We find ourselves beset with sin. We find ourselves cumbered beneath a load of care. So God, we come to you saying help. 
come to you saying we cannot do this alone. We come to you trusting that you who began good works is faithful to complete it because we are not. God, we are sorry. We tried. So hard we tried and we, we failed you. We let go. We gave up. We were not the better person. We did not yield uh, or not yield to temptation. We gave fully into it and so we come to you and say, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry because I didn't have the strength. I'm sorry because I intended to do it. I calculated to do it and I want to come and say I'm sorry God God we have been facing an unprecedented time but we have an unprecedented God who has shown us in the annals of history that you continue to be with your people and so we stretch our hands to you no other help we know release and relinquish all power to you because we've messed it up. And so God, please hear our prayer. The ones that are in our hearts that we cannot get out. The ones that are difficult to say through our lips. The ones that are caught up in the back, cat, back catacomb of our minds that we have forgotten because if we would remember we might not be able to make it we lift those to you those sins those thorns in the flesh those things that separate us from you and from your people who you have given us and God we pray that you would forgive us and remember them no more hallelujah yourself in a place that says I don't feel forgiven I still feel dirty I still feel nasty I still feel like I really don't want to give it up but I want to encourage you to lay it at the feet of Jesus give it to Jesus he wants to take it he wants to carry your burden and your load and, and forgive you of your sin and remember it no more saints live in this peace confess it until you possess it declare that you are forgiven not because of who you are ah, but because of whose you are amen this simple song uh, well it's not simple but it says something like this stand against the Lord no one can no one will saints can you sing that with us who can stand against the king who can stand against the king
stand against the king?
against the Lord. No one can. No one will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. simple song off based on the hymn come on who am I that you are who am I that you are mindful of me that you hear me when I call is it true
David. Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised. Thou would all our burdens bear. Thou will all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing. there will be our sweetest portion. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Come on, say it again. Saints, I'm a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend And up in the go, and up in the go. They wasn't worried, they wasn't worried. This I know, this I know. Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. I said, Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. He fixed it for my mother, Jesus, he will fix it. And I know, Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. Mary's baby, Jesus, born in a manger, Jesus. suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, Jesus. died, and buried, Jesus. the third day he arose Jesus. from the dead, Jesus. the same Jesus, Jesus, he will be. Won't he do it? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I was sharing with a friend, dear sister, this week, and she's 
been going through a, a unprecedented time, as many of us are, but hers in very particular ways. And she, she reminded me that sometimes we can, we can only declare this is the day that the Lord has made, for we are not yet ready to rejoice and be glad in it. So I give you permission today to proclaim that this is the day that the Lord has made. And maybe by the time the day is over, you have seen glimpses of God's hand and reasons to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, good morning, Mamalee. Um, it's so good to be together in this way with us. Again, we're always um, uh, cognizant of the fact that um, you're not here, where I can lay my eyes upon you in the ways that I would love to and you would love to for um, all of us. However, we thank God for this medium um, by which we can share um, with each other in the word, in worship, and in the mammaly. And so this morning, I, I bid you good day um, and peace on behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we certainly um, thank God for continuing to um, work with us here um, as we are trying to do what is um, faithful in every way. And in, in that vein, I, I, I'm so grateful for our worship team, um, social distancing as they are. I'm grateful for um, Brother uh, Gus, who continues to be faithful in, in helping us to pull this together, and certainly for CJ and for um, and, and then for those who are volunteering, I shouldn't say volunteering, I already clarified that, serving um, throughout the week to make sure that families have food and have the things that they need during this time in our community. I'm grateful that Maple Avenue was not off because of um, COVID-19, but we are still on. And we thank God for that. And we ask God to continue to speed up the day when we can all be back together fully again. Amen. Amen. I do have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. Um, one of them is about babies. We have new mammaly folks to celebrate. Um, on Friday, um, Joel and Allie and Willa welcomed um, little Tekka, um, little guy, into the world. And so we're so grateful um, that God has blessed them and mom and baby and all are doing well. And so we're thankful for uh, 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 the latest uh, member of the Dozman family and of the, the Mamaly as well. In addition to that, I received word that this morning, um, we, uh, Josie, um, um, Viola's daughter, Josie, all of you know her, she gave birth to a baby girl. Um, Nayeli is her name. And so we're just so grateful to know that these two new babies are are um, waiting for our arms to hold them and touch them. And there have been other babies born that we haven't been able to meet yet. And so we thank God for God's faithfulness and how God continues to expand the mammaly. Uh, Josie um, and baby are doing very, very well is the word. So we thank God for that. So much to thank God for. I want to take this opportunity to say a word of thank you also to Nathaniel Ryan, who has been our intern on um, this semester. And even though we haven't been able to see him as much as we might want to, he did preach a few weeks ago. And not only that, but he's been um, um, holding and um, leading the um, invocation project around the, um, the, the vocation of play as it relates to our children. So he's been doing that behind the scenes. Those of you who were able to get the little children's resilience bags, he delivered those. He put those together together and he's just really been such a gift um so um Nathaniel if you're watching I want to say a special word of thank you to you and we know that in the coming weeks you also will be uh welcoming um a little one into our mammaly family so we look forward to the good report um in that way as well for you and Celeste and the girls um a few other announcements to be mindful of if you remember last week um uh there was a video on this very page <clears throat> that was done by um, Brad Houlihan, one of our elders, and it was inviting us to consider giving to our benevolence fund. Now, the first thing I do want to say is I thank God for all of you continuing to be um, generous in terms of um, responding to God's call to give in your offering, and I'm so grateful that even in the midst of this, this, this COVID separation, we still managed to exceed our budget for the month of April, and so that seldom, if ever, happens, and so it's only because you have said yes to God and continue to do that. So we want to acknowledge that and thank God for it. And so um, and, and as it relates to this benevolence fund that Brad has um, brought to our attention, I, I just want you to know I was in a meeting this week um, with some um, community folks and 
um, <clears throat> we were praying and thinking about um, the whole matter of deferred rent payments. We know that there are several people during this, um, during this time um, who have been um, allowed to, to defer their, their payments, their rent. Um, but we, we, we began to realize that deferred means deferred, and it means that when things are lifted, these people are still going to be required to pay their rent, not only the rent for that month, but the, but the month of March and April if they miss those. And so it, it sounds like there's a potential for quite a few evictions, but, but even a potential for the church to be able to step in and help people to kind of manage some of that. So that's what this Benevolence Fund really is about at this particular time. You know, some of us have received our stimulus payment and said, well, what is this for? I, I mean, I, I could use it, but I don't really need it. I wonder if you would consider maybe above and beyond your offering, um, just earmarking something, especially for the Benevolence Fund because I think when this is lifted, we're going to definitely need to step into some ways of supporting um, folks in our community and in our church. So just be mindful of that, and, um, and we'll, we'll keep you uh, posted about that, that situation. Um, let's see what else. I have my little notes right here. Um, next Sunday, next Sunday, if the Lord wills and tarries, we will come back together in this way and it would be Mother's Day. So this is what I want to ask you all to do. If This is especially for, um, for our kiddos. Um, in some traditions, um, Mother's Day means hats. <laughs> it means that mothers are going to put on big hats, little hats, all kind of hats. So what I would like us to do as a mammaly, an extended mammaly, is to ask our children if they are there with us, I don't care how old they are really, um, to make a hat for us to wear during service next Sunday. And then I want you to take a picture of yourself in that hat. Now maybe you have a hat already at home and you're like, I like this hat. Or maybe you're like, I'm not a mom yet or I'm not going to be a mom or whatever. I have a hat. I want to wear a hat. Why can't I wear a hat? Well, we're just doing this in honor of the moms throughout history who have worn hats. So nobody's going to police whether or not, you know, you're a mom. This is not about moms. It's really about the hat. Okay? So we want to ask you to put on your hat, take a picture, and we're going to post it on this page. So we're going to do that before the service. We probably should do it after because then people are going to be so busy looking at hats, they're not going to be really looking at the service. So maybe we'll post them after the service. But you can take the picture at any point in time. But I want you to wear the hat during service in honor of the mothers who've gone before us who wore hats on Mother's Day. So I'm excited to see what you all are going to come up with, what you're going to create. Some of you, I want to say your name. I already know it's going to be kind of crazy. Um, I don't know if I'm going to let my, my kids aren't going to make me a hat because I already got a hat that I want to wear. Well, they said that I am going to wear that hat. So I don't know. My husband says he, got, he has extra hats, and y'all know he's telling the truth. If you need one, you know, talk to him. Uh, um, uh -huh. So anyway, this is a little fun, some way to just connect us again um, in this time when we are, are separated. A couple of other announcements I want to talk about. There's a um, new Bible study that has just gone live. Um, called She Is Called. Um, it's something that's been produced by the Reformed Church in America by Women's Transformation and Leadership. That's the um, office that Liz, Testa, you know, our sister, that um, she so faithfully and, um, and, and in such extraordinary ways leads. And I'm on her guiding coalition and also have been part of contributing to this Bible study. So I want to invite you to take a look at it and see if your, your cohort group that you're Zooming with on a regular basis, maybe this is a Bible study you could do together. Maybe it's something you can do on your own. Um, um, and we are going to host a online Bible study starting not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday using this very curriculum. So if you want to be part of that Zoom Bible study, um, um, men, women, children, anyone, then um, just let us know. Send us a, a message um, either to our Facebook page or to our um, office email, and we're going to send out an event bright to see how many people want to participate in this Bible study. So really excited, excited about that. Um, Pastor Emily is working hard to pull together a Together Again task force, and so we're grateful and we're looking forward to being together again. And we know that when this is lifted, we can't just rush back into the ways in which we live as a family before, but there will be things that we would want to be able to do, and so we're not just waiting to get the word, but she's pulling together a task force to think about stuff like safety safety and distance and such things as that. Um, finally, Pastor Emily has put together a Together at Home 
um, liturgy that is available to you. You should see the link right there. We, you see that I'm here and I'm standing at the table. And ordinarily on this first Sunday, we would be coming to the table here together. But obviously we cannot do that during these times. And so Pastor Emily and I have been working together to put together um, a series of, um, of liturgies for you to engage at home with your family or by yourself or whoever you might be with. Um, and so the, all it will require of you is that you simply um, open the link and that you go into your own cabinet and you pull out a bowl, you pull out a cup, and you pull out a plate. And the, the, the liturgy will tell you whatever else to do from there. So I hope you will participate in that um, liturgy with us. Um, and let us know if there's anything there that challenges you or that, um, that awakens you or that, that troubles you. We'd, we'd love to hear about that until we can be together again. Amen. Amen. Um, let me just check in my little notes to make sure I don't have any other announcements I'm missing. Okay, so now would be a time when I, we'd ask you to consider um, your offering. As you know, most of you by now, we have several ways that you could actually give. You can give through um, our Tithely app, which some of you have been doing, so thank you for that. You can give through our PayPal app, which is on our website. Um, you, you, some of you have been doing that. Thank you. Continue to do that. And you may also send a money order or a check to our address here at Maple Lab at the church, and we will receive those as well. We're so grateful to God for your faithfulness in giving back to God what we know already belongs to him. And so we're thankful for that, and we ask you to continue to engage in that same way. I want to take this opportunity to invite us before we get into the word, into a time of prayer. I've been in collaboration and conversation with our brothers and sisters in South Africa and the situation of um, gender-based violence, as we know, has already been exponential, but the, 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 the level of, um, of I, I just say evil in terms of how this um, violence is being exacted upon children between the ages of um, about six, sometime younger, but at least six to 17, it's indescribable. I wouldn't even want to tell you, honestly, um, on this platform, um, the methods that are, that are being used. And it, it breaks our heart, and it breaks the heart, certainly, of our staff in South Africa um, who are trying to uh, share the good news with people who have, who have witnessed and been um, victims of such horrible violence. So I, I just want to um, take a few minutes to, for us to just go to God in prayer together. I know we all have burdens that we're bearing um, together, um, whether it's because of um, having to uh, uh, experience the death of some because of COVID and because of other things, diagnoses that kind of get shoved under the rug because COVID is the sort of the predominant thing we're talking about. We know that in our own community, a young brother um, passed away right a couple doors down from me and um, it's, it's always so sad when children, um, you know, whose you know, lives are um, succumb to depression and to such things as that. And so it's just a time for us, a reason for us to gather together and to lift these concerns to the Lord. So let us pray together. All wise and all knowing God, we come before you now because there is indeed no other help that we know. God, you have been faithful to us down through the years. God, you have kept us when we didn't even know we were being kept. And God, we, you hold us in the palm of your hand, and you caress us, and you protect us by those very same hands. And we thank you. And yet we also know, God, that in this world there surely is trouble. And it's not that it comes to you uh, as a surprise, but Lord, we come before you just letting you know that we see it, that we hear it, and that we feel it, and that we know that even in the midst of it all, you are with us. So God, now, Lord, we lift up those whose hearts are heavy this morning, heavy because of emotional, psychological, physical, spiritual illness. God, we dare to pray for healing. We dare to pray for a lifting. We dare to pray for deliverance. We lift up those this morning, God, who have been victims of violence, physical, domestic violence, sexual violence, Lord. In our hearts, sometimes in our heads, we can't, we can't even begin to imagine how you, you will repair that which has been broken and torn down and shattered 
but Lord, you are the mender of broken hearts. You are the God who can do above and beyond what we could ask or imagine. Lord, would you visit each home? Would you touch each child? Would you embrace each adult, every single person who was, uh, who was being affected by, um, by violence in, in their lives today? God, would you do a work and let it begin with all of us? How will you have us to participate? God, so often we want to sit back and send you, but you send us and you go with us. So what is your will? What is your desire? What is your delight? How can we please you in these matters today? This is our prayer. This is what we want to know, God. Show us your way. And God, for our families that are grieving today because of the loss of their loved ones, for whatever reason, God, would you be a comforter to them? Would you show them, Lord, the many ways in which you are kind to them in death in order that they might rejoice? God, uh, we thank you. We thank you for new life. Thank you for new babies in the mammalie. We thank you for new babies being born COVID-free. And those who were born with COVID, God, we thank you for them. We thank you, Lord, that you love them. You have a plan for their life and that you set them in the midst of community and family in order that they might know you and feel loved. And God, we're grateful. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the privilege to serve the church, that it is a blessing more than a burden. We thank you for the family, our family, our members who pray together, who laugh together, who weep together, who love together, who worship together. Oh God, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to make us worthy in your presence. We want to honor you with our lives. And when our hearts are overwhelmed, would you lead us to a rock that's higher than ourselves? Lead us to Christ our Lord, in whose name we do pray. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord comes to us this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But first, let's go to God in prayer together again. Great word of life, great light of the world. Speak to us now. Shine upon us, we do pray. So when we look, we will see. And when we listen, we will hear. But we don't want to be those who simply see and hear. May our hearts be transformed by the power of your truth. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are rock and our redeemer. And all God's people said amen. The word of the Lord from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. Hope you have your Bibles right there in your hands. If you don't know where your Bible is, get it together by next week so that you can have it in your hands then. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. 
about the other things, I will give instructions when I come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've said it before. You've heard me say it. This is not my table. This table does not belong to Maple Avenue Ministries. It doesn't belong to the Reformed Church in America. It doesn't belong to the Christian Reformed Church in North America. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is the first Sunday of the month of May. And ordinarily, we would be partaking of this table. But not today. Today, we, we simply find ourselves hungry for Christ's body. Thirsty for Christ's blood. And we linger at the font, longing, waiting with Judah and with Elasia and with Harmony and other mammaly babies who anticipate baptism. Yeah, we wait until he comes. For we know surely this pandemic will not be lifted until he comes. We know that we will not be able to come back together again until Christ comes. We know that God must come and lift the burden of COVID-19 until he comes and beckons us back from social distancing. Only God knows the time and the day when we will be together again. So we linger and we hunger and we thirst until he comes. On this day, we reflect upon these words of Jesus and of the Apostle Paul. Do this in remembrance. Wait for each other until he comes. Sounds like remembrance, communion, and hope. Do this in remembrance. Wait for each other until he comes. Three phrases contained in this, the Apostle Paul's sacramental instruction to the church of Corinth. These, the words of Jesus at the table. Three words to God, our faith on the first Sunday of the month when we are together but not really together. Do this in remembrance. Jesus begs this of his disciples. And Paul echoes it in in, in this letter. These are words that Jesus himself shared that last Passover feast when he gathered with his disciples. We might be six feet apart or more, but I tell you, we can still remember. You've heard me say it a thousand times, and I'll probably say it a thousand more. Remembrance is not a cerebral action, but remembrance, the car, is to stop and to focus until it changes you, until it changes me, until it changes us. Remembering ought to change us. Have you ever parted ways with an old friend? You know, you just want to walk away. Maybe it seems like it's a toxic relationship. Maybe the person is too needy. Maybe they, they take advantage. I, I don't know. But, but you ever walk away and, and, and just want to move on with your life and shut the door on that friendship? Even when they apologize for their transgression, you, 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 you still want to be done. And, and even when they try to make amends, you still want to, want, to, want to put up a wall. But then you take a moment And you remember. You remember that this is the person who had my back when it was against the wall. This is the person who gave their last when I had nothing and needed it most. This is the person who has been a witness to my deepest losses, to my greatest accomplishments, and to my highest hopes. And then your heart turns. Have you ever had that happen? I have. In your heart, it turns, and, 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 and now you, 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 you find that your, that your heart begins to soften, and, and compassion moves in and rises up, and mercy pulls you close. 
And then you say, yeah, this person is flawed. They might be messed up. But remembering changes my heart and my mind and draws me back into relationship with them. That's, that's what remembering is, you see. This is how God remembers. And God, God went ahead and just, just, just knew that the time would come when God would be so fed up, so sick and tired of, of being rejected by humanity. So God went ahead and gave God a, God's self a, a, a little note, put a rainbow on the mantle of creation so that when God would be inclined to wipe out the earth by water again, God could remember, stop, focus, and God's divine heart would soften and mercy would rise up. Compassion would lead the way and God would be God to his people again. Remember, this is what remembering does. God remembers, and, 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 and Christ remembers at the Passover, at that, 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 that last Passover meal. He remembers the blood that had been smeared on the doorpost for the salvation of God's people. Remember this. Don't just think about it. Don't, don't just think about Do this in remembrance of me. Stop, pause, linger until your heart is changed. And sometimes, sometimes we, 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 we remember by drinking. Drink it. Remember by drinking. Drink, church, until the salvation of the Lord is our only desire. Drink until it changes our mindset. Drink until it changes our motivation. Drink and remember. Take and eat. He says, sometimes we remember by eating. Remember, we remember the, the flesh of the lamb that was roasted and eaten, the lamb that was slain, and, and, and we eat and we eat until it changes your thoughts as a people and our actions as a people until our eating sets us in sync with God's will. Do this in remembrance of me. Are you thirsty yet, church? Are you hungry yet? Today, we don't get to eat. and We don't get to drink. But we do get to remember. To remember Christ our Lord. We get to remember Christ our Lord in this bowl. Remembering our baptism. Remembering the waters, yes, waters that cleanse, that purify, that refresh that we knew, we remember that Jesus Christ is living water. We get, we get to focus and remember that in the waters of baptism, Jesus promises to forgive our sins, to welcome us into the body of Christ, the church, and to seal us as his own for eternal life. We remember. We remember also his clear call to go forth into the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Today we get to remember, we get to turn our faces to remember even our own baptisms. Some of us, some of us were wee babies at baptism. That's part of our tradition, you know. So remember, if you can, maybe, maybe you can't remember the details, but remember like this. Remember that God set us into a family that already believed God. God entered us and brought us into and with a people who believed, who received God's covenant for your life, even before you knew anything of it. That though born in sin, God did not hold our sins against us, but offered himself to us before we could even repent or ask for forgiveness. In the waters of baptism, new life and the promises of the profession of your faith and eternity with Christ. Look at this bowl. Look at it. Look at it. 
and remember that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Others of us can remember the coolness of the water or maybe frigidness of the water as we stepped in. We, we can remember some of us the hand of a clergy supporting and beckoning us and, and the overwhelming waters above our heads as, as we drowned our old self so that our new self could emerge by the Spirit. Remember that then. Look at this bowl and remember that. Focus on that moment when the love of God was so overwhelming, when the grace of God was so evident and the purposes of God we're at your fingertips because it's there. It's there where we're changed. It's there when we remember. Do this in remembrance of me. And then these instructions, wait for each other. A turkey sandwich on a plate for one no more makes a Thanksgiving feast than a piece of bread and a cup of juice makes the Lord's Supper. Wait for each other. Because communion is not intended to be enacted alone. Can one come into union with oneself? Can Jesus possibly serve the table without Thomas who would doubt the very words that Christ has taught? Can Jesus break the bread without the beloved disciple laying upon his breast with affection? Can he dip the cup without even Judas present who would deliver him into the hands of his enemy to fulfill all righteousness? I declare certainly not. So wait for each other. Because we don't, we don't eat alone. This meal that we partake of, it is not to satisfy the growling belly, but to nourish our collective souls together. And I know that some of us have found places of nourishment in our lives and in our experiences. I know that some of us have found individual places and spaces of nourishment. Some of us thrive in isolation. Some of us have been given special revelations that have nourished us. But our soul, our collective soul as a people of faith, as a church, will need nourishing when we come together to commune again. We don't eat for ourselves. That's why the Apostle Paul says, if anyone is hungry, let them eat at home. This is not an afternoon snack. This is a faithful act of a people sealed by God who offers only one thing to quench our hungry, thirsty souls, and that is Jesus in this cup and this plate for the body of Christ by the power of the Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. But here's the caveat. We must wait. We must wait for each other. This phrase, it, it, it brings to mind a vision that I, that I have, even as I stand here now, of one of the mothers of, of, of the church, Karen Cox. I, I can see her even now making her way down the, down the aisle. And, 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 and as she walks, she, she doesn't walk as swiftly as, as others do and not even as swiftly as I've known her to walk in the past. But, but nevertheless, here she comes. And as she comes, I see her locked arms with, with Jackie Williams, Annette Hall, or with... Jarvis, I see her locking arms with someone who doesn't look like her, someone who doesn't share the same experiences in life necessarily that she did. I see her intentionally walking, and I see them slowing down their pace in order that they might come and, and, and approach the table together. I see something that looks like wait, wait for each other. 
The gesture, it screams and it, it resounds in ways far less overt in our life together as a family. Because I, I also envision the children, our cherubs, eagerly awaiting the time when, when they can devour the, 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 the remnants that are left after the service. I, as they eagerly watch me as I break the pieces off so there'll be enough for everybody. And, and, and then we pray the Lord's Prayer. The children know they need only wait for the prayer to end. They need only wait for the choir to sing. They need only wait for the benediction. They need only wait for each other. For this reason, many are sick among you and some sleep for they have not yet learned to wait. That the church's life is measured by that of the most vulnerable members. Wait for each other. For this reason, churches die. We do not eat alone, friends. Brother Keith, he brought this bread fresh and hot this morning. It smells good, you know it does, and it absolutely looks good. But I don't get to eat from this table today either. I must wait for communion. I must wait for us to be together again. For Jesus wants us to wait. Wait for each other. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim his death until he until he, until he comes. The mystery of the faith that we profess is that Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So this is not the last supper as we often declare. This is indeed a holdover snack. To satisfy our hunger for the kingdom. To satiate our longing for the fullness of Christ until he comes. And beloved, come again he will. As soon as the tartness of the grapes and the accumulation of the yeast on our palate begins to fade, we come again and again and again until our souls grow parched from crying, Abba, Father. And our weary days draw to an end until, until my Lord says to my Lord, sit at my feet and let me make your enemies your footstool until the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead of Christ will rise first until there's no more hunger, until there's no more thirst, until there's no more virus and no more death, until we hear with our own ears, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. This is just a holdover snack, friends. But it satisfies our hunger and thirst for Christ temporarily until he comes. And here, here is where we rest our hope, friends. On the truth that the grave is empty. That Jesus appeared to the disciples. That he returned to the right hand of the Father. And that indeed Christ will come again. And so... Until we can be together again, set aside a bowl to remember baptism. Set aside a plate to help us wait for each other. Set aside a cup to hold our hope until he comes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your word, for the manifestation of your spirit. Break the bricks off of our hearts, O oh God, that you might find a heart of flesh, that the seed of your word would go down deep, 
like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, fruit with seed in it, fruit that will last. For your glory, which is for all of our good, in the name of Jesus Christ, our beloved one who lives and reigns with you in the spirit, world without end, and all God's people said, amen. Beloved of God, before we go forth in peace, I wonder if we can say together the prayer um, Jesus taught his disciples to pray all together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved of God, as we go forth from this particular place together back into whatever places we find ourselves, may we go knowing we do not go alone. God goes with us. And by that same spirit of God, we go together. And so may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who waits with us, the comfort and hope of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, be, and abide with all of us, both now, henceforth, and forevermore, as we go in peace. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know.